This week on the Glass Cannon Podcast, the characters shake off a brutal encounter and focus on the tasks at hand. So, uh, are we going to head back to get rest? Yeah, I think As, yeah, we need full rest. It's back everyone, to room 28? We need to warn the town. I don't know how imminent this attack is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A seditious half-orc aims to turn Lork against his allies. You know that they hate us. Well, the orcs are just going to kill you anyway. They've always been prejudiced of us, and they've always treated us like shit. Do you think you're, they like you? They think they look at you like a friend? They think you're filth. Could he incite a rebellion? Each one of you sees a half-orc kind of look at you sideways and quickly skulk away. With the fate of True Now in the balance, there's no time for bad jokes. Anything I brew, no matter how big the business, would be a micro brew as a dwarf. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if skid right in your jokes. <laughs> the adventure continues now. In the interest of full disclosure, I just had some peanut butter before I recorded this. Uh, Mostly because I'm an idiot. Um, Anyways, what's shaking, everybody? It's your old pal, Troy LaValle, dungeon master and host of the Glass Cannon Podcast. Oh, baby, do we have an episode for you this week? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Uh, what happened last week? Oh, so our heroes have survived the massive boss battle against diminutive vermin, and uh, some questions are starting to be answered while other new mysteries are beginning to come to light. I want to take a moment this week and put on my DM cap for a second, if I may, and talk about the concept of resting in Pathfinder, since the players were ready to murder me last week because they didn't get to rest before the Shadow Rat Doctani fight. It's a difficult concept to handle, I think. In my games that I run, I'm pretty dead set against letting PCs rest in the middle of a dungeon. It's just like, oh, well, we've killed a few dozen goblin in this underground cavern that's still pretty huge and clearly full of monsters. Let's take a quick nap next to that flaming strike trap that almost killed us. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. Now, obviously, everyone wants all their powers and spells and hit points back before the big fights. But in my mind, I think the onus is on the players to find a way to both conserve their powers for when they've obviously hit the big encounter of the day and stock up on healing potions so that your cleric doesn't have to burn through all his channels too early. To be honest, we're actually playing with our own house rule, where when you rest, you get back all your hit points, spells, and powers. But the actual rule as written is that for every eight hours of rest, you only get back the equivalent of your character's level in hit points. So, for example, a second level character rests eight hours, he gets back two hit points. That's brutal, right? But that's the actual rule. In the core rulebook, they say you can also allow your players to get back their level plus their con bonus per eight hours rest as like an alternative. But that's still pretty small in comparison to getting them all back after eight hours. With regards to spells, arcane spellcasters get all their spells back after eight hours rest. Whereas clerics and divine spellcasters, they only need one hour of prayer to get their spells back. But to get back powers like Galabras' channeling ability or uh, Baron's grit points, for example, you need eight hours rest. So yeah... I may have goaded them into a combat they were under-rested for, for lack of a better word, but it just wouldn't make sense that Doctani saw them with the flood troll and ran to the other room. Then the party said, let's go back home, rest, and eat some pizza. Then we'll go back to the playhouse the next day, and there's Doctani sitting there with his thumb up his ass playing checkers, just waiting to be ambushed. It's stupid. So, the moral of the story is, I'm clearly the most generous DM in the history of the Glass Cannon Podcast. Folks, as always... On behalf of the GCP team, I want to extend a hearty and humble thank you for all the support. Seriously, uh, you know, we just cruised past 1,300 subscribers. iTunes put us on their front page. And the reviews that you've been writing really warm the cockles of our nerdy black hearts. Uh, give us a follow on social media. Shoot us an email to say hi. But in the meantime, get ready for a fun one. Here comes episode 11, Four Warnings and a Funeral. All right, it's time for another... Uh heated episode of the glass cannon podcast i'll kill you <laughs> i got pretty hot worst dm ever wow no, i'm just kidding he's the best wow he's, the best. he's awesome um let's everybody give him a hand like oh boy whoa get your hands out there <laughs> that's not what he meant <laughs> that was my penis that he touched all right okay so um so that's it that was the end of the adventure 
So you guys. Oh, are, oh, we killed the shadow rat boss. Game over. Yep. <laughs> shadow rat, shadow rat boss was, he was behind the whole attack on Trenau. So that's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, okay. So we left off and you found a body of a half orc that uh, Galabras knew just from his dress was a cleric. Oh, I don't think we knew. It was a half orc. I don't think we did. Uh, what I meant that was everything. you noticed that it was a cleric. <laughs> right. So uh, it's a half orc? It is what remains of a half orc. It Ooh. seems as if, as if the rats have uh, taken their fill of what uh, was left of the body. So all of its strength, those bastards. I'd yes. say, uh, Galibris, you're a man of the cloth. Uh, why don't you approach? <laughs> um, its nope. remains are pretty heavily embedded in the rock. Gross. Uh, uh, the rubble, rather. All right, I'm just going to do a perception check on it to try to like. Sure. Move. Can you guys pull it out a little bit? It's uh, with a with a strength check. Sure. Um, I mean, I can't. You can Lork's, try. Lork's, you can really, try. Lork's really strong. Yeah, right? my strength is terrible <laughs> right now because of that shadow wrap. <laughs> he was yesterday. Ooh, twenty. Natural nineteen. You, I only have a plus. Fling one. it across the room. I only have a plus one to strength <laughs> right now. It was DC ten. Wow. Ah. Oh, right. um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then Galabras uh, looks at it, mm-hmm. and uh, this rather macabre corpse uh, still wears a suit of sturdy chainmail, uh, and his pockets hold a wand of cure light wounds, uh-huh. with eight charges remaining. Uh, that's good. good Fuck to have. yes. A fine silver dagger. Worth 160 gold pieces. A red gold unholy symbol of Nelgreth, the blood god. Jeez. Worth 60 gold pieces. And six blacks. Uh, six blacks. Six blacks. And six <laughs> blacks. Uh, and six black onyx gems worth 25 gold pieces each. Oh, that's each? great. Wow. Pretty oh. decent haul for this. Yeah, 150 G's? Half or part. <laughs> We're all rich now. Yeah, let's retire. Um, but I mean, the body is completely decimated. The rats and what other vermin has been down here. Uh, uh, so this was a, uh, I guess Calabrus is telling us, but this was a dark cleric. Yes, um, uh, Nelgreth is. Uh, what for more information we, uh, on Nelgreth, check out the Pathfinder campaign setting, Belskin, Hold of the Orc Hordes. Do we do a knowledge <laughs> religion check? I mean, does he know about this? Um, or yeah. should I just look at my copy of Hold of Belkson <laughs> when I get home? I, I probably should have done What's it before the, the episode, but I'll uh, I'll look it up uh, as we're no. as we're going throughout this. I'll tell you more about Nelgreth. No, Nelgreth. Yes, uh, but you can roll a knowledge uh, religion for old Nelly. Uh, sixteen. Sixteen. Um, so what you know with the sixteen is uh, Nelgreth is an orc god known as the Blood God. He is the god of anger, rage, and strength, chaotic evil. Um, and his favorite weapon is the orc double axe. Hmm. The sacred animal, the wolverine. <laughs> you know a lot, Galabras. <laughs> you have this encyclopedic knowledge. Well, I, I studied this in school. <laughs> uh, all orcs rever Nelgreth as the source of their ferocity. Imagine, like, hmm. just a blood demon orc. Oh, wow. Wow. Troy is showing us a picture of this thing right now. It looks really cool. I'll put, I'll put that up on the Tumblr. It's a yeah. awesome. pretty awesome drawing. Um, yeah, so that's what you find. It's worth a couple couple coins. And now you okay. have this dead uh, half-orc cleric. And the, uh, the tunnel ended about 15 feet in. Looks like uh, someone was digging for something and abandoned the dig. Can I, can I do a heel check to see approximation how long this body has been down here? Sure. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do the same thing. Yeah, as a ranger, I have some heel uh, scales. Nine. I'll Ooh, do the same. Terrible. Five. Yeah, I got a six. Oh my god. Oh wait, we have another. There you go. Twenty-two. Oh wow. Um, weeks. Hmm. Weeks. Uh, you know, less than two months. Okay. And there's no personal identifying uh, sorry items on this thing um, who it is with o- only the uh, the unholy symbol what about cause of death are there broken bones did he fall down from that pit is he a broken legs ankles um, like that? I will, I'll roll uh, what's his name Baron's uh, heel check over uh, he was killed oh should we ask our How? new captives Stat- about it yeah for sure uh, Dot yeah. Tani. I, I don't. I don't know nothing about it. 
You don't know shit. You didn't see this body. You were, right? you they only told me. Body. He only told me what I needed to know. You're useless. Where is Screed? I, I don't know. Where's I, his hideout? I, I don't know. I, I think that they used stop to... Stop lying. I, I'll stop hitting me. <laughs> I, I think that they used to use this place as their hideout, and, and clearly they were looking for something, but then they abandoned it, and then I, I was just told to be an infiltrator here. Ah. That was in the note to Malira. It's like, don't... It's, it's something about... Something about, like, don't be frustrated... Even though we haven't found what we're looking for, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm like yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. optimistic that our plans are still going to come through or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Baron, we, Baron approaches Doctani, and in one hand he holds shit, and in the other <laughs> hand he holds Shinola, and asks him to tell the difference between the two. I, I, my, my knowledge shit skill isn't that good. <laughs> well, it was worth a try. <laughs> we'll never know the difference. Gormley sits down next to Darktani and is like really close, uncomfortably close. All and right, so I, I found it here. I'm going to call back. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Joe. I, I just <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I found I found the, the note here. I'm just going to call back. Malira, I shouldn't be away much longer. We still haven't found what we're looking for, but it's only a matter of time, and preparations are proceeding as planned. A meddling militiaman has been poking around, but I don't foresee him being a problem much longer. Once our work is done, it won't matter anyway, and I can return to you. I marvel that I found you, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, so I guess they were digging for something here and then gave up when Roderick started poking around, and we're like, I guess we'll get rid of him. But he says it doesn't matter either way. Yeah, I think they kept on looking. They killed him so he wouldn't really... I don't know if he ever got to this point, because there was a troll down there and all the other stuff. He yeah, just but, started but, to investigate. But this guy, Doctani, says they... That this was his headquarters, that this was Screed's headquarters, and he, he pieced out. This is, that's what I think. I, I, I don't know. I'm just pieced this together myself. I was just told to Are you eavesdropping these... on our conversation? Well, I can't help but hear. You're very loud. <laughs> I, I, I was just told to meet with these two flood trolls and, and be like a coordination of his act, of Screed's activities. Gormley is now sitting very, very uncomfortably, uncomfortably close to Doc Johnny and says, So what about the clothes upstairs? Those, those, those aren't mine. The nobles' clothes. I, I know nothing about it. Were they about? To, were they? Were they going to use this in some sort of plot? I, listen, I told you what I know. I, I had nothing to do with this. Can I sense motive to see if he's telling the truth? Sure. Seventeen. No, I, I, I really don't know. My, I'll tell you, my only job, my only job was to schedule regular meetings with these two flood trolls who served as emissaries between Screed's half-orc saboteurs and, and whatever other tribe he was talking about. And they're the ones that are going to attack through now. That's but, all I know. But why, but why do this, Duck Tunny? Why, why sell out your people? Why sell out your whole town? Because they hate raid? us. You know that they hate us. Well, the orcs are just going to kill you anyway. They've always been prejudiced of us, and they've always treated us like shit. I'm surprised that you haven't turned already. Yeah, but at least they don't try to murder you and do terrible things to your asshole. Well... <laughs> <laughs> right. Not to put too fine a point on it. <laughs> they do great things to your asshole. And true now. When Screed approached me and asked if I wanted to take part in a plot that would assure the devastation of True Now and guarantee me a leadership p- tr- position in Screed's orc tribe, I was more than happy to agree because at least there I would be appreciated. Whereas in True Now, I'm trash, just like you're trash. You think you're, they like you? They think they look at you like a friend? They think you're filth. They think we're all filth. I, I like him. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm okay with him. Thank you, Calabras. And Gormley, I'm, I'm coming around on you too. But I don't like Give you. Give it time. <laughs> but I don't See? like you. See? Racist! So Gorm- <laughs> <laughs> You're just a dick, and because he doesn't like you, you call him racist. Why? Because I almost burned your friend to death? <laughs> one thing! I, I'm, I'm still not thrilled with that. <laughs> Gormley, Gormley. I thought it was a shadow rat. You're still covered with burns. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, speaking of which, we should uh, Get to the haul show. this guy back yeah. to town. We need to warn the town. I don't know how imminent this attack is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One last question. Where's the other flood troll? Yeah, yeah. Good oh, question. they were twins, right? They're, yeah, yeah, they yeah. were twins. So Where? Sister. I, I don't know. We never. I never Where's had the them. brother. We, we killed, killed the sister. We killed the sister. You killed the sister. We, they always met at. We always met at separate times so that they would never. They would never have enough information on their own. It would keep keep the channels clear. When's the next meeting? Next meeting is sometime in the next week. 
So uh, You literally just said your only job was to schedule the meeting. <laughs> what day is the meeting? Right, well, you ruined my meeting today, so I wasn't able to set up the next meeting. You killed the emissary. <laughs> so I, if, I would think that the troll's going to assume that something's up and not even come. <sighs> not if you tell her to Now tell who's the murderer? You. You. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> who, who said that? Right. All right, let's, uh, let's search this area thoroughly. The mm-hmm. lockbox. And get the lockbox if we can't. What do you want to use the the knock scroll? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, because you can't. You can't. I can't learn it. So we can't learn knock. Yeah, yeah. Might as well use it. Um, So yeah, let's search this room and the tunnel. All right, uh, and then go open the lockbox and get the kid back to the town too. So how do you want us to do it, Troy? Do you want us to perceive the tunnel first? Perceive the room with the celestial statues where we fought Doctani. Uh, um, well, the tunnel you pretty much cleared out. Okay. You found that it did that it, they stopped whatever they were looking for, and there was a murdered body of a cleric in there. That's all uh, looked at. So uh, the statues you can take a look at. I'm gonna do a religion check on the statues. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna do a, a arcana. Can I do an arcana check? Uh, no, it would be religion for this. Sorry. Sixteen. Sixteen. Uh, they are various uh, statues of the emissaries of the Yomadai. Ah. Uh, what are the emissaries of Eomadai? Are they like angels, kind of? Or, or yeah, like, like or yeah, I guess they would be like the equivalent above of angels. human. They're like demigods. They're kind of like yeah. they're like the heralds of Galactus. Oh, okay, heralds. Got it. Got yeah, it. yeah, that's a great one. Uh, all right, so D, uh, seventeen perception check just around the statues, looking for any you know hidden uh, latches or uh, you know hidden compartments within them. Um, um, what did you roll for perception? 17. No, you don't see anything. Okay. An, anything of note. This is a, an old, abandoned, uh, you know, sanctuary. I'm just, I'm going to do a perception check, too, just uh, on okay. the room. Uh, 20? Uh, you notice uh, one of them is holding a uh, sword, a long sword of Yomadai, and the sword comes out and it's a masterwork longsword. Ooh. That's uh, awesome. Gentlemen, you're all cunts. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, I told you he's a racist. <laughs> Sorry, that was a sexy He's beast racist reference. against... Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I pulled the sword out and says, this looks like rather a nice piece of work. A masterwork, one might say. <laughs> you're a nice pick of earth. Yeah. What? Whoa. I mean, can we gag him? Whoa! I think I just had a stroke. Think about it. Yet another mini stroke from the DM. Yeah. Uh, yeah okay. Well, that's. <laughs> I think I just had a stroke. Okay. I think that's probably it. Uh, let's get out of here. Lockbox. That's awesome. I should, yeah, I got the. Let's head up to the lockbox and use the knock spell. Let's knock the lockbox. Knock in on the lockbox. Now, how does it work? Where you can't cast that spell, do you have to roll? Yeah, for it? yep, yep, yep. Uh, yeah, so roll. I'm gonna try to uh, not. Oh, but I can give her. I can give her the luck. Okay, hold on. So I figured out the. I read the scroll thing. So it is. It's over your caster level because you because um, Gormley can't cast level two spells yet, and it is a second level spell. So in order to activate the scroll, since it's above uh, your spell level. You have to roll the die, and uh, you the DC is the scroll's caster level. You have to make a caster level check equal to the scroll's caster level plus one to cast it successfully. So it should be pretty easy, actually. So it's so like a thir- three? So it's like a four? No, it's like a four. It's not ten plus. It's like the scroll oh, oh, equals just, oh. the caster's level plus one. So three. Uh, no. Um, what do you need to uh, to be? The question is, what do you need to be as a a witch to cast a second level spell? You have to be third level. Third level, right? Third level. So it's add one. So it's a DC four check, and okay. you add your caster level to it, which is two. So you basically, if you roll a one, you fail. Yeah. Anything else? So I don't even need you a little bit of luck. I can just do guidance, and I'll be fine. Yes, absolutely. I might as well give you the luck because I think we're done for the day. But well, I, I like it when you touch me. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow, that's it. That's pretty easy. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that it, it. I think it. I think it's a lot easier with these lower level spells. I think that if we were third level, because you can often be like a third level character and get a scroll of like a fifth level spell, and you have to be like an eighth level caster to cast that. So then it becomes like DC nine. You're adding three to it, and you know. So yeah, I mean, essentially, scrolls are not supposed to be impossible to activate. Yeah, they're know? they're made to be used. They're made like, to be used. And clearly, yeah. this, this but, scroll but is here for the box. There's a small percentage chance that like you ruin it, and something you know something bad. Right, happens. and bit of luck's worth it because if you fa- if you a one is always a fail no matter what it says right here for, for scrolls. Oh, a natural oh, okay. roll of one always fails. Whatever the modifier. So it absolutely, you yes. absolutely need bit I of luck. give you the bit of luck. Right. And if she fails, she must make a DC five wisdom check to avoid a mishap. And you don't have a high wisdom, do you? <laughs> no, uh, no, I'm not a wise character. <laughs> <laughs> but you would get a second roll on that too. <laughs> yeah. So okay, I'm giving you a bit of luck, and I'm and I'm touching myself and casting guidance. Oh, I hope you roll one one because that just makes it exciting. <laughs> Okay, I, it's a nine and a seven. So okay, so you're good. So we cast it on this lock rolls, box, though. and and ta-da! it says uh, this can also be bypassed with a dispel magic or knock spell. Uh-huh. Oh, <laughs> nice, nice. And the steel lock box sealed with an arcane lock opens up. Oh, so it wasn't even just a regular lock; it was an arcane lock. Yep, that's it's pretty sweet here. It like breaking the. It says breaking open the chest with brute force has a seventy five percent chance of breaking each item inside. <laughs> so if you just said, oh. "Let me break through it," whoosh, I roll to see what gets destroyed. Oh, but uh, you so guys, this was a good use of that scroll. Yeah, very good. You use. guys yeah. nailed it. Uh, a little behind the curtain uh, knowledge of what happened. So what you see inside is a potion, two scrolls. A masterwork hand crossbow. Ooh. And a case containing ten normal bolts, ten cold iron bolts. Wow. And ten silver bolts. Uh oh. Um, can I spell can I do spell cap check on the scrolls? <laughs> silver silver <bolts>. Bolts. <laughs> It's I'm loading them in my crossbow. <laughs> Sixteen on the spell craft check. Uh, okay. <laughs> One is a scroll of bark skin. And one is a scroll of Ghost Bane Dirge. What is fucking that? <laughs> uh, it's in the Advanced Player's Guide. I'll look it up. Uh, I don't own that. And the uh, other thing, or whatever, it's a potion of dark vision. Oh, something, we all, something we all already have. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a masterwork hand crossbow? A masterwork hand crossbow. Does anyone want a crossbow, or do we have an objection to me using that? Well, I don't know that you can use a hand crossbow. Yeah, I think oh, it's on the exotic. Oh, you guys are going to love this. You know what Ghost Made Dirge does? <laughs> oh, does it kill ghost rats automatically? It says the target coalesces into a semi-physical form for a short period of time. <laughs> <laughs> when subject to the spell, the incorporeal creature takes half damage from non-magical attack forms and full damage from magical weapons. Oh, that jerk. <laughs> we should have done this earlier. Yeah, we were too busy like there might be a locked door downstairs <laughs> we were out thinking ourselves uh, the adventure uh, was like here's the exact spell you need <laughs> I wish I'd leave it here we'll come back to it later I um, could um, that's an exotic weapon a handgun or uh, the uh, I think uh, it's exotic I, I don't think it is um, but <sighs> I could use it as a backup it's a martial it is it is it's exotic okay it's uh, just okay. that like rogues for example like they're not proficient with exotic weapons but they're immediately proficient with a hand crossbow I can hmm. I'm exotic weapon proficiency but just with one handed firearms right great so uh, yeah, it's something that we should hold on to I mean it would yeah. be it would be neat if you know, take my one of you guys level. could learn how to use it because or oh no 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 actually it's completely relevant I mean, you can just sell it because what we need is the bolts. Yeah. So you guys are both using crossbows and those cold iron bo- bolts and uh, what was the other one? A silver. A silver. They're great for uh, you know attacking like demons and devils and stuff like that. Werewolves. Can we, can we hold on to it? I might take a thief level. Oh, absolutely. Oh. We can hold. Yeah, on. yeah, sure. Yeah, let's yeah. hold on to it. Where? Okay. Cool. Um, all right. So now we. Right, have... So now we'd like to uh, go back to town. Uh, Bring the kid. Lork will uh, escort. Um, Doctani back. We'll you know we'll leave the kid with Gormley, his babysitter. Uh, it's creepy, creepy babysitter. You ever and play Go Fish? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! And head. Bring back. me back to the furnace room. <laughs> <laughs> oh Gormley! And head back to Trunau. Uh Okay, so you guys head back to Trunau. Um The whole time Doctani's like, just don't bring me back there. This attack can happen any day now. 
Um, and you guys get back there, and uh, Cursed greets you at the gate. And uh, I'm assuming you guys tell him all of what went down. How does that go? Let me tell him all. All right. <laughs> so, in Black episode hole. six, we walked up to the playhouse. <laughs> we just play him the pod. Curse, curse. Yeah, Can curse. I download that from iTunes? Yeah, do you have iTunes? And just, just, just give us a good rating if you like it. Oh, oh Okay. <laughs> Is there a Gmail account I could send a message to? If I <laughs> Why, in fact, there is. <laughs> if you're interested in what the combats look like, uh, glasscannonpodcast.tumblr.com. Oh, oh, that sounds lovely. You could see maps of the, of the Plague House and everything. So, speaking of the Plague House, <laughs> what went down there? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, we'll, we'll summarize for him that we've, uh, you know, we found this flood troll that we think Roderick had found. Um, oh, actually, we haven't seen this cat since we talked to Katrezra and got his journal. So we got right. So uh, we can show him the journal, oh. uh, written in Roderick's own hand with well, his own sketching. What was Roderick doing in the plague house? Well, <laughs> he was fucking somebody. He was fucking his half orc fiance. Curse! Don't tell your dad. Oh no! I, uh, why would I talk to my father about such things? But how, how do you know he was there? We found his hope knife. Oh, and do you give? We it hold, to him? Yeah, we hold it mm-hmm. out to him, and it says, "For Roderick, my love." Oh, oh! This is both sad and um, special moment at the same time. I, we're having his funeral tomorrow at sunset, and it is part uh, our tradition to consecrate the hope knives of the fallen. Uh, may I keep this? Uh, <laughs> wait. <laughs> we don't need it, right? But does, would Brenya want it? And would that buy us any goodwill with Brenya? I mean, Brenya will be present at the at the funeral. Right, right, right. right. Uh, uh, so, sure. Didn't mean to be rude. It's yours. Okay, Please take good, it. Good, because I, I mean, I wasn't really asking. We're just... <laughs> <laughs> just thought it would... We have a tendency to overthink everything. What, man, what happened to the playhouse? Did you almost get killed by some shadow rats or something? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can notice it, but uh, all of my muscles have atrophied. <laughs> and uh, can you take a look at this sore? <laughs> oh, my God. God, what is that? This weeping sore. We actually should head right to the sanctuary. To the doctor, yeah. And get all of your diseases cured. Yes, that's exactly my, what we should too. do. And we should tell Halgra... To, or somebody, you know, somebody about the attack. Some about sound, the attack. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we... Uh, Being curse, back in town. Curse, could you uh, get a message nice. to Halgra? Tell her to meet us at the, at the sanctuary. Well, I mean, we're, we're the, the, everything's being happened for Roderick's funeral. Can you talk to her tomorrow? No, I mean, no, no, no. What, no, do you need no. To, what do you need to talk about Halgra? You can talk to me. I'm part of the town's militia. Is everything all right? <laughs> Is that guy quiet down? Who's, who's yelling? Christ. Uh... Cursed, it's, it's a matter of great import for the city. It's, 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 the city may be under attack. Under attack by who? By it's, orcs. It's, an organized attack. I mean, worse than usual. We need to move fast on this. We need to talk to Halgra. Now. Stop asking questions what? and move. All right, all right, all right, all right, fine. We're in the middle of Belkson, and you're uh, uh, surprised by the idea of an orc attack. I well, love just, it. Uh, you know, we've always had uh, hostilities with them, but they, an outright attack? Well, uh, what, what led you to believe this? Come to the meeting with Halgra. <laughs> I guess, well, I guess we still have Doc Tani. Yeah. Like, I, I, I push him up front. I'm like, we have intelligence from this one. Push him forward and tell him what you told us. And he does. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is very, very disconcerting. Uh, all right, well, I'll arrange a meeting with Halgra immediately. Um, w- would you join me tomorrow at the Flame of the Fallen for Roderick's funeral? I... It would mean it would mean a lot to me for you to be there. Yes, of course, of course. You're you're kind of known now as being a, a bit of a special group to the community. So we are also investigating his death. So it would be nice. Uh, Any, if you, if anything you, for Roderick. We have to make sure we sense motive of everyone at that funeral. So we'll be there as is as is tradition. <laughs> Just getting in people's face and asking and them why yeah, they're crying. Gormley, <laughs> what are you doing at this funeral? Gormley is going to sense motive on on on. Uh, Good old curse here just to see if this he's on the up This poor bastard. Up. He can never get any trust because he's always like so Well, I rolled squirmy. a three, so I'm going to assume it's going to be good. He's the most trustworthy guy I've ever met. <laughs> uh, uh, if you right. need any spiritual counseling, I'm, I'm here. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you, Galabras. As a man of a god. I would love to talk to you sometime when you're not covered in blood. Uh, well, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> um... All right, then uh, I'll, I'll speak to Halgra and uh, I'll set up a meeting. And at, at, at the sanctuary, at the sanctuary, tell us to tell her to meet us at the sanctuary. 
Okay. Um, and, and, and then the funeral tomorrow at sunset. Yes. We're coming. Jesus. <laughs> oh, it right. seems like you've got some... Some... <laughs> Some things I, I've been drinking. <laughs> can, uh, Stuck in your teeth. Can I ask a quick uh, out of character question of Skid about his character? Mm-hmm. Uh, as, no. No? Yeah, you get it. <laughs> as a, a former slave and someone currently kind of still um, chained by the situation of living in True Now in the middle of an orc hold, um, I don't know what your religious beliefs are, but wouldn't you see death as some sort of emancipation from this awful life at this point, as some sort of relief? No, no. I think Galabras sees the chance to do good. Like, that's all he really wanted. That's why he set out to this part of the world in the first place, was a chance to do good. He think, If he were to die, I think that's that he would think of that as being selfish, like wanting to die. Okay. So I think he wants... This is an opportunity to do some kind of like benefit. All right, to the sanctuary. All right, so you guys go to the, to the sanctuary and uh, get some uh, some rest. Um, but Halgra comes and sees you before you bed down for the night. And remember, Halgra is played by Melissa McCarthy, <laughs> uh, like a, a beaten looking Melissa McCarthy. Oh, uh, can I? Did any chance I got uh, some removed disease at the sanctuary before? She came. Uh, no, no. There's nothing wrong with you right now. But he has. But I have a disease. What about the rest? It was confirmed. Right, right, right. It um, hasn't kicked so in. So you went to Tayari and asked to have. Yeah, your disease. I mean, you know, we can we'll, we can pay for we'll it. Pay. We're good for it. Uh, yes, yes, please. Uh, that 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 that's fine. Okay, we don't have to play it all out. I just right, wanted right. to make sure that it. Yeah, I didn't forget to mention. How about Bear? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, no of course. You, you, both of you are, are ill. Yes, mm-hmm. we were attacked in the plague house, and we have a we have the plague. Don't tell anyone. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> keep it on the down. Perhaps oh. if you both could make donations to the sanctuary, that would be wonderful. You know, Absolutely, it was anything, anything small, fifty-five platinum pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Is it okay if it's covered in coal? We just I scoff. We had our, our, scoff. our whole collection plate, fifty-five platinum pieces. Everything for the whole year was stolen, not but a month ago. So if you ever find a bag of fifty-five, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just making this. Lork is just like looking out. He's doing the side long glance. He's like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, like, that's really sad. <laughs> Give him five gold pieces. For both of us. Yeah. <laughs> We're not giving five each. Oh, I think we took ten whole gold pieces. Thank hey, you. look, if you go to Bellevue, the emergency room, that's about what you'd pay. Ten so gold is it pieces? 500 bucks? Yeah, that's like 500 bucks. Do you have uh, True Now and health insurance? Don't, don't these people have some sort of uh, yeah, an they, oath? They, we have, they have yeah. to take care we of have, We have someone who works at the sanctuary here. Yeah, Isn't don't that I get, I volunteered at the sanctuary for months. I've when never seen here. people who just found hundreds of gold pieces and 55 platinum pieces Can't scribble you, over giving us five. Can't you comp me this one time? Oh, boy. Come on, man. No, we'll give you, we'll give you, the, we'll give you ten for both. I just said it was a donation. Here, yeah. you're, you're healed. Bye. Uh, uh, <laughs> there are uh, clerics who like to haggle. So this, much. Cleric's yeah. like, this cleric's like NPR during donation season. <laughs> Meanwhile, Halgra's like, are you guys done? Oh, oh so, uh, sorry, Hagler. I, you, didn't, I didn't want to give you the filth fever. I just want my, I'm just waiting for my tote bag. <laughs> my donation. <laughs> as soon as I get my tote bag, we're, we're out. We're gone. A two <laughs> DVD set of Wicked. <laughs> Gentlemen, ma'am, I don't mean to be rude, but uh, it's a very busy time for us. Uh, can I help you? Helgra, I, I, we'd never call you in on, on a, a matter of less import. Mm-hmm. This is, mm-hmm. uh, we have reason to believe there is an imminent attack on the city, uh-huh. an organized attack. And, and what uh, makes you think that? We have a prisoner. His name is Doctani. I don't know if you know him from Trunau, but I've seen him around. He's been talking to a, an orc. Is it, is it an orc or is it a half-orc scree? Screed. I think he's an orc, right? Is he an orc? Uh, no, it's uh, well, Doctani told you it was a half orc. Okay. okay. A half orc named Screed, who's been used in the plague house as a, as a meeting place with trolls and orcs and half orcs and all manner of ill folk mm. like myself. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> to, all of this uh, <laughs> is connected to Roderick's death. Well, we don't know that 100%. Uh, wait, Roderick's death, he was a, it was a suicide. Roderick's death, Halgra, was not a suicide. We, yeah. found, we have evidence. We found oil of Taggart 
in the man's wounds. He was paralyzed before he was killed. Okay, okay, all right. This is a lot of information. I find this fascinating, but this is news that you need to tell to Jagrin. I agree. So, let's do that. Okay. But not now. Why not? We'll talk to him tomorrow before the funeral. But uh, the town's defense is still paramount, is oh, it you not? You said it wasn't imminent. Or I, we don't know. We specifically said it was imminent. <laughs> imminent? Like it's happening tonight? It, we it don't could. know. We have to increase our defenses. Well, uh, we've been here for a long time, and we've always fought off every uh, battle. I can't imagine... This one would be any worse. But these things you speak of are quite disturbing. Uh, yes, I am chief defender, but this is uh, Jagrin's uh, area of expertise. Sense motive. He needs to know this. Fifteen. I'll do the same. Ooh. Nineteen. Eighteen. Thirteen. Um, Another number. Yeah, no, it was, it, this is this is a job for the patrol leader. Uh, I t- yeah, okay. I mean, I totally get that. Yeah. But, but we don't so get she, any she, sense you don't that get the sh- she's, she's like, like in on it. Right, no, no, no. You, you think she's just like, she's interested, but she's a little out of her league with this. Like, she's more And And in general, this, this woman, Halgra, like, she's got a rough demeanor, and some people might not like her methods, but she's generally think to have thought to have the town's best interest in mind. Oh, right? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. She's so, also, like, known to, like, have lots of kids from, right, like, from half-orcs, from half-orcs and stuff. Like, she was an adventurer. She's very open-minded. Yeah, yeah, she's an open-minded girl, but she, you know, people love her and respect her. She's not, uh, this is for Jagrin. Your well, old buddy Jagrin. Well, Hagra, uh, congrats on Ruby, and uh, why don't you get home and take care of her? Thank you. Thank you. I, and I know my voice sounds like a man, but I didn't want to do a woman voice. Hey, how... <laughs> Hey, oh, hey Hagar, one last thing. Yes. Don't leave town. <laughs> don't tell Hagar. I, I, this, is, I, this is my town. I, I don't know why I leave. That's I, why I was saying not to leave. I, because I, you have a We job just highly recommend it. I, we're, we're don't fans. read into it. Don't, I, into it. don't read into it. Didn't you say there was an attack imminent? Maybe you should leave. I see you guys at the funeral. All right, see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, should we rest before we go to the longhouse, or should we go to the longhouse tonight uh, and tell Jagrin? It's pretty imminent, but it is the day before the funeral. We could go to the funeral and talk to him, and maybe he'd be more receptive, maybe some grieving. I don't know. Either way, I think it'll be fine. But we it's should. up to you if you want to time it after he's grieved his son at the funeral. or. Uh... I just want to cover our asses. Like I don't yeah. want to like not have told everybody we needed to tell because we were yeah tired. yeah no, yeah. I just I just think that like it would be the perfect time to attack the village. It's like yeah. exactly at Roderick's funeral. Metagame you know? for a minute. I have a really bad feeling about what's going to happen at that funeral. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Um, well, no, I Orc thinks as mu- I mean he more than anybody does not want to have an audience with Jagrin, and he knows Jagrin is like not going to believe him and not going to trust him to a certain extent, but, you know, he feels like, like you said, covering your ass. Like, he's got to do his part to, you know, he doesn't want to have that sort of guilt laying over him that so he didn't try to increase we, the defenses we, of the city. Well, we, we also, have the prisoner, too. We also have two, we have two paths here, which is we can play up his racism and bring in Doc Tani and be like, look, we got this filthy orc, he's, you know, we got to punish him, we got to get ready for this attack. Or we can try to change his mind on half orcs a little bit by seeing, look, this good orc that cares about the town, Lork, is helping, and not all orcs are the same. And maybe he'll become warmer and more open to the side if we do that. Yeah, I mean, it could go either way. I just, I'm nervous that he might not trust my word. He, he might think that I'm trying to misappropriate their defenses at the wrong time to open it up. Whatever. The one thing about the funeral is, you would assume everyone would be there too, like. Katrezra, Sarah, Sarah, everybody like would probably be there. So yeah, but I think that there'd be a lot of militia. Yeah, and I think there'd be a lot of militia like standing down during that time, like doing a you know honorary funeral kind of thing. We should the, try to ask him to keep at least a handful of militia on each gate. You know what it is to me, like uh, my comparison as a player, it's like a, like a death threat or a bomb threat at like somebody's funeral. It's like you have to continue with it, but like you have to like at least tell people. You can't not tell them. So like if people at least know, then you've covered your ass, like you said. So um, right. I think I think we talk to Jagrin immediately. I agree. Let's do it. You coming up? You going to come up and be a 
half work about it? Yeah, I mean, I'll go. I'll go right to them. Like just because I'm an employee and I, I'm, I'm militia. And <laughs> granted, I've not done my job for the last day and a half at all. Kind of pieced on that without calling out sick. So we're heading to Jagrin. Heading to the Longhouse. To the longhouse. We have this. We still have this kid with us, by the way. We should probably drop him off. At I, I thought we just can thought. I can I leave? Yes. Oh. <laughs> no, he's okay. I didn't know you were still there. Right, oh. Wait, we untie him and let him go. <laughs> I really think this was unnecessary. I'll uh, come around soon. Play more go fish. Uh, I'm going back to the playhouse. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come around soon. <laughs> we can we can knock on Curse Door first and have him lead him up to his his dad maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, so you guys go to Longhouse. Uh, they lead you to Curse Room. Curse greets you and says, "Oh, you want to talk to my father? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure." Um, so he he brings you. Up <laughs> this to is going to go great. A by room the way. and uh, knocks on the door. And, uh, I've been dreading this. Yeah, come in. And uh, he opens the door, and there's like a fireplace, and uh, Jagrin is sitting behind a desk in this, uh, you know, longer room. What does he look like? Who's uh, playing, he looks who's like, playing Jagrin? Kind of looks like Paul Giamatti. Oh, oh wow. Okay. okay. Does so he have any really untrustworthy? Does like he, bald with like mutton chops? Yeah. Okay. Does what? he have like a creepy bear rug or any like moose heads on the wall? Yeah. What's the room? Like? I know it's pretty sparsely decorated. No frills. What's is there stuff around like uh, books or uh, weapons or uh, no? There's like a, there's a weapon. Uh, his sword, his long sword on the wall, and uh, his armor hanging on a pin. Um, but he's just sitting there uh, is writing. It, is it masterwork? Uh, you can ask him. <laughs> I will. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, he looks him. up. Uh, he's like, "What? Cursed? What did it? Oh, can I help you?" Chagrin, I, I don't mean to disturb you, but we have information that there's an attack is coming on the town, Chagrin. An organized attack uh-huh. from orcs. It's funny that I'm the one sitting behind the desk this time. <sighs> it's true. Uh, what, what's his title? What? Uh, Captain? Patrol, patrol, patrol leader. leader yeah. patrol, it, it, it's true, patrol leader. I was there. You were there. Well, my, my son tells me you were uh, investigating uh, Roderick's uh, death. I thought it was a suicide. Yes, it, it was. It was absolutely a murder. No how question. Do, how do you know? We found oil of Taggart in his bloodstream. It's a paralytic agent. He was paralyzed before he was before he was killed. Made to look like a suicide. Hmm. He lets out a long sigh. He's like, well. Well, at least we know Roderick didn't disgrace himself with an unnecessary suicide. Uh, tell me more about this attack. Do we still have uh, a prisoner with us, by the way? Yeah, yeah. Right. Not with you right now, but he's in the jails. Yeah, no, he, he's in the jails. I would say we could point you in there if we need to. Um, I, I heard about this, uh, this half-orc that you brought in, one of our locals. Yeah, in, in investigating Roderick's murder, patrol leader, we, we were led to the plague house as a possible source of his uh, the shady business that led to his death and we have we had reason to believe that something that Roderick was investigating on his own there might have led to his murder so uh, in investigating the plague house we found this half orc there who told us that it had been used as a headquarter quarters by age, uh, by orcs orchestrating an attack I see well uh an attack of that magnitude to take on uh, us, to take on to now, uh, these uh, enemies would have to signal for it, and uh, as long as my militia keeps guards stationed at the beacons around the city walls, to now has very little to fear. Uh, even if these saboteurs signal an attack from outside of uh, Trunau's walls without being detected, the militia should have plenty of time to sound the alarm and close the gates. Uh, this is good. I, I'm glad I, I like to take information from all sources. That's what make me the, a good leader. Uh, I appreciate the information. I will uh, make sure to keep extra patrols out, as it were. Uh, but uh, for the moment, I would like to uh, spend some time uh, honoring. One last thing, Jigrin. Yes. It's not just a standard orc attack, as you've seen in the past. Uh-huh. They're collaborating with trolls. Flood trolls. Flood trolls. Flood trolls don't come down this far south. We, hi, Jigrin. Remember me? Uh, no. <laughs> A long time ago. Lived in this town. You haven't aged well. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we killed one, a flood troll, at, at the plague house. And we know there is another one coordinating their efforts to, to help with the attack. With all due respect, if the likes of you four killed a flood troll, whatever the... Whatever it's doing this far down, I think my militia will be able to handle any that come this way. With all due respect. I, I would like to also... Yes? I pray you're right. Well, you are the cleric. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, in the vein of all due respect, I would like to uh, take these last few moments for my son's funeral to honor his memory. Thank well, you for the information that it was not a death, a suicide rather, uh, and I will uh, keep extra guards uh, on watch for this attack. Thank you for, for taking the time. I, I appreciate it. And Lork sort of like backs out of the room. So if you need any spiritual guidance, <laughs> I'm, I'm available. I don't believe in that rubbish. To hear your confession. <laughs> but, damn it, how did you... How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so you guys, you guys leave. Curse is like, uh, was was how to go? Was he cool? <laughs> he was surprisingly cool. Curse, oh, good, good, good. Uh, <laughs> he said you're not getting an allowance for another month. Oh, dag nabbit! <laughs> <laughs> Old curse can never get an allowance. Uh, as you can imagine, I have a lot to uh, to prepare for my brother's funeral. So uh, I guess I'll, I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow, Kirst. Okay. Hey, try to get some rest. I'll try, but you, you guys kind of keep, keep bothering me. <laughs> uh, see ya. <laughs> you did ask us to help you. Yeah, I'm sorry we keep troubling you with evidence about your brother's murder <laughs> after you asked us to specifically to investigate it. I told you guys I'm not a good investigator. <laughs> I don't know how this works. So uh, are we going to head back to get rest? Yeah, I think As, yeah, we need full rest. If everyone, Back to room 28. If everyone goes <laughs> to get rest and does that, I'm going to head over to the local tavern before uh, bedtime. Okay. Um, so you guys head back to... Uh, ramble House? The, the old Ramble, the ramble House. I'm gonna, who's carrying the gold now? I think we've split it up. Okay. Between us. Great. Yeah. Um, so um, let me know when I'm at the tavern. You're there. Uh, so I walk up to the barkeep. Baron goes up and uh, says, Say there, friend, I'd like a glass of sarsaparilla. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't speak for... <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> common, actually. Belskin sarsaparilla? Uh, I'll have an ale, please. Oh, an ale, sure. Yes, here you are. Um, and I say, mm, This is mighty fine. You might not happen to have yourself a spare brewer's kit back there, would you? Uh, as a matter of fact, I do. Um, here, uh, you got the coin for it? Yes. All right. It's 25 gold pieces. Oh, well, that'll be 25 <laughs> gold pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure doing business with For you, you look like an honest fella. 25 gold pieces. <laughs> Oh, okay. And then I uh, also say, uh, so for crafting in this, um, are we going to do, we need to have the recipe parts or just the gold value for them? That's a, that's a great question. Yeah. You have to ask your DM when he has time to look up the rules. <laughs> Again, I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> He's not talking to the guy. <laughs> I'm not asking. That's great. Um, <laughs> that's just whimsical uh, and wonderful. Oh, I have to look at Look at this before episode 12. <laughs> Hell of a question there, Dwarf. <laughs> okay, so before... Gotta go pour some more ales. I, I basically want to start brewing something with this brewer's kit, so... Um. Well, home brewing is the fastest growing business in uh, all of Trunau. I'm a dwarven craft brewer. I uh, have a little mic. <laughs> well, anything I brew, no matter how big the business, would be a micro brew as a dwarf. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I wonder if. Skid right in your jokes. Hey. I personally like Skid's jokes, they're the best. <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> I basically, you know, we'll figure it out later, but I, it'll take me a week to brew anything, so I can wait. All right, so we have time. Uh, but you, yeah, you are the first to purchase something. Do, 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 do. Um, Lork, you were awoken in the night by the sound of a uh, drunken dwarf stumbling into the room. Oh, uh, yeah, I wanted to say I'm not there. 
Oh, you yeah. didn't go home. I, I'm the only I, one. I, went, I, I go home. You go home. For the yeah, night. home, okay. home. Um, are we splitting the party? Yeah, we're splitting the party. Okay. Do you go back to your mountain cave? <laughs> no, I'll stay around. I'll stick around. So long as I'm getting a free room to the Ramble House. Uh, okay, so it's the next day, and uh, do you guys want to do any shopping before you head to the funeral, or we can? I would also like to buy a portable alchemy kit. I'd uh, like to get. I don't have a uh, crossbow. I'd like to get a crossbow. You can't use that master arcane crossbow. I can't. No, that's, it's an exotic. Oh, that's exotic. exotic. Uh, do you want to do this? <laughs> you want to do this on it? No, like, no, I all the shopping. I don't know why I even offered it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do it between episodes. Yeah, we'll, yeah we can. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we'll, we'll probably it, more. Interesting. Even if something happens between episodes where you wouldn't be able to go shopping, let's say that the shopping that you're doing now, we'll do between episodes. Okay, right. that's fair, right? Even if we're at the bottom of a dungeon, right? We totally. still go shopping. Right. Yeah. The only thing you can't do is rest. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, you're at the funeral, and uh, you're at uh, the area of town known as the Flame of the Fallen. Be sure to check out our Tumblr. Glasscannonpodcast.tumblr.com, and you will see a map of Trunau, and you'll see right where the Flame of the Fallen is. Uh, and it is a rather somber affair, um, as Roderick's funeral is taking place just before sunset. Uh, you see Cursed there, uh, you see Jagrin, you see Brynja, uh, noticeably far away from Jagrin, obviously, keeping her distance, but she's there. Uh, you also see uh, Katresra. And you see Omast kind of stumbling about. But he's there, uh, like crying and laughing, being a little too loud. He's that guy at the funeral. Because uh, he's back drinking again. Yep. Um, and uh, High Priestess Tayari Varvados is officiating the ceremony. And uh, you guys see this all go down. Lork, you've seen this uh, happen before. And Gormley, you remember these type of ceremonies back before you moved to your mountain cave. Tayari consecrates the flame with sacred herbs, like chanting, uh, and she takes Roderick's hope knife, which Kirst gave to her for the ceremony, and uh, performs the traditional requenching of the deceased's hope knife into the flame. And she kind of like holds her hand directly in the flame and isn't harmed by it. And the, uh, the hope knife stands in there. Holy shit. And then she uh, she pulls it out. Um, and is this some sort of fantasy world? And it, uh, <laughs> it comes out and the blade is pure black. Um, and once the ritual is over, she hands the dagger to Brynja. Whoa. Whoa. Ooh. As is tradition. So the town is accepting the this. Greeting. like Not necessarily, but that is the well, tradition. You know, they, they, they uh, accept to, Palgrim, so... Gives it to the grieving fiance. Jagrin nods at you and uh, nods at you as well, Lork. Keeping a watch, you notice that there are a couple more guards around, but not as much as you probably like, based on how strongly you felt about this imminent attack. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, maybe it's just for show. But you do see a couple more people, uh, and then the uh, orcs attack. The funeral <laughs> ends. The funeral ends, um, and. Uh, yeah, people just start to disperse, and uh, you guys are left there, kind of alone in the uh, at the flame of the fallen. And it's a it's a, it's kind of a a moment of hmm. Wow, we just kind of a couple of days ago we were at a celebration for a child's birth, and now uh, a few days later we're at this very very sad funeral for a deceased member, an important member of the community, and you see how everyone was so overjoyed, and now those same people feel so broken. And knowing what you know, and knowing that there's some other stuff going on, it's kind of a weird place for you guys to be. So you feel very sad, you also feel very close at the same time, the four of you. Even weird little Gormley and Howie. Oh yeah, no, I mean, I definitely feel closer to the to these guys, to uh, Gormley, Galabras, and yeah, even Baron, because uh, like you know that was that was messed up there. Like Lork was like, "I'm gonna die." Like, yeah, <laughs> he had a little bit of an embarrassing moment in front of uh, these people. So he was he was a little vulnerable. Yeah, we've Baron all... has since purchased a new pair of underpants for Lork when he <laughs> shat himself at his imminent death. Uh, being flanked by a shadow rat. It was it wasn't my best moment. It wasn't my best moment. <laughs> I never run away, but I might want to run away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shut up. 
so is the is there a talk uh, at this funeral like I'm just wondering how uh, pervasive the the rumor is that he was murdered versus suicide. Like, does everybody think he was it was a suicide, or is Jagrin like trying to wash away this rumor that it was like a a a uh, you know like a, a suicide that was misinterpreted and thus weak? Like, as if he he was like, oh, I'm kind of scared it might be an orc. And I think Jagrin it, does he keep hoped it on the that it wasn't, but Jagrin's pretty much what well, the facts are. Walked in. It was pretty clear evidence of suicide. Our militia went in and investigated. Didn't find any other evidence, so it was suicide. So he was relieved for you guys to give him all this evidence, though now he knows it wasn't. He knows his son didn't disgrace right, himself. Is, is he going to publicize that? Or it is has, he keeping it on the deal? It, 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 the funeral was not the proper time to be like, he was murdered! <laughs> um, but, uh, During know, the eulogy. It's, it is a small... <laughs> By the way, folks, uh, Gormley gets up there. Is this on? <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was murdered. It wasn't a suicide. Try the cheese. Uh, so, you know, it's the type of thing where True Now is such a close-knit community, it won't take long for the word to spread, um, which is, they may not want, like, people to know, oh, there's uh, killers in this town. Yeah, can I, uh, <clears throat> would it be possible for Lork to, is it relevant at all for Lork to, to do a perception check or um, a sense motive check or anything like Lork is basically looking around at other half orcs for like anyone that's looking suspicious or, or might be part of this plot to like like an inside player in right. allowing this straight up racial to profiling yeah, yeah totally and you know and he's part of he's part of the race obviously but he after the way this guy talked about it like look you know don't they don't treat us this way and blah blah and like Lork knows like we, you know we get treated like shit but he also he's been out you know in the field and he knows the way like wild orcs are what? and there's no <laughs> concept of order there's no like being nice to you just because you're an orc like you know it, it's a, a constant struggle of of just murder and death and chaos and so like he he's like I'll take this like I'll take this like you know dislike or hate or whatever but at least there's some system of order to it where like you know that you're not just going to get murdered just because somebody said the wrong thing or you bumped into the wrong person at well, the wrong time and uh you know, you understand probably that most orcs don't have a relatively cushy job behind a desk with the militia. They right. Might, they might, oh, yeah, they might the have a, a much, much worse place within True Now. So you also know that there are probably other orcs that sympathize with Doc Towney. Right. And, and, and Lork, I mean, he's got a little bit of a backstory that, you know, hasn't fully come out yet, but he, you know, he has a criminal background because he was raised on the streets and he, he was raised in a bad way and he, lashed out and he served his time you know and, and part of his time was doing this giant hunting and all that kind of stuff so it's like you know it, it, like think of it like Game of Thrones like being sent to the wall like it was that kind of thing where he's sent to just like throw himself at the threat of giants and, and trolls and stuff like that uh, and he did that for a while until he was uh, you know injured and really couldn't continue at that time so like there is this you know, he has this violent past. He knows where that comes from, but he also knows that this, <laughs> given the alternative, is better. And he's just trying to eye up these half orcs that might be, you know, by their very appearance, like showing that they are they don't buy in. They're not into this society, and, and the, they want to see it overrun. The bottom line is, there's no role you can do. That's true. Um, but I just wanted to get it. I just want to get a little peek into Lork's thoughts. Yeah. So you want to roll like a perception? That was your original thought. Yeah, it's a roll. perception or sense motive, whatever you wanted me to do to like look around at these faces, see if anybody's shifty looking or is like you know calling in coordinates. I don't know. <laughs> right. Uh, everyone roll. Airstrike. Everyone roll a perception. Twenty four. Unless it's stonework, and then I got a twenty six. Uh, uh, Are there any stone golems? <laughs> In the, in, the, in the crowd. Are there any secret doors in the funeral? <laughs> yes. In the nine, casket. Six nine feet under. Uh, what would you say? Nine for Gormley. 18 for Lork. 23 for Gormley. Uh, Ooh. 24. Galabras. So Gormley is just kind of... Uh, She's petting Howie. The, uh, the, the sort of uh, the gravity of the funeral didn't affect Gormley maybe as much as everyone else. So she's uh, petting Howie. Um Precious. Meanwhile, uh, Lork and uh, Baron and Galabras, it's that moment where everything feels just a little too quiet. You're at this area in town, the Flame of the Fallen, where it like everyone dispersed from the funeral, and there's just this eerie 
thickness in the air. Mm-hmm. Uh, and meanwhile, the sun is just starting to set in the sky. And you look around, and you do see half-orcs. And then you think about this rumor that you've heard, that there's been more half-orcs in town yeah, than normal, been all over. usually. And it's this moment like uh, Godfather 2, or no, Godfather 1, when uh, Michael is in Italy, mm-hmm. and he's teaching Apollonia to drive, mm-hmm. and he's got his two bodyguards, and Michael comes out, and he's, uh, he talks to one guy. He's like, hey, where's Apollonia? He's like, oh, he's gonna, she's going to pull the car around. Uh, she wants to show you that she knows how to drive. She'll make and a he, great American wife. She'll make a great American wife. Uh, and then he goes out and sees one of the bodyguards sort of skulking away. And oh, he's like, he where, just knows. Where, where, are you, where are you going? You get that sense. You, <sighs> each one of you sees a half-orc kind of look at you sideways and quickly skulk away. Apollonia, no! Apollonia, no! <laughs> Uh, and then I love that s- comparison. That's so That's good. That's pretty good. Man. All of a sudden, this all too peaceful moment uh, is shattered by the brazen call of signal horns. <sighs> and then you can hear coming from the lower quarter, back where uh, Lork lives, uh, you hear screams and <sighs> shouts. Oh, shit. And then up in the air, above the city, you see this giant boulder come flying in oh, shit. Oh, and crash into one of the uh, towers that guards the, uh, the inner wall, and the tower collapses. Shut up. The battle for Blood March Hill has begun. Oh, my God. And True Now is under attack. Okay, well, I, I go to... Are we stopping? No. <laughs> I love, by the way, that Jagrin looked at us like 9-11 truthers, and then this attack happened. And yeah. Uh, actually, it is, we could stop here, so I actually, like, the battle. What, you, what, what were you going to say? I, okay. try, I was going to say, I'm going to go, all right, I'm going to go to the thing and stop the battle from happening. <laughs> Jesus, what, that's a way better ending. That is a way better ending. There it is, folks. We'll see you next time. Oh, okay. Battle of Blood March Hill. <laughs> 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 That was awesome. <laughs> 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 that thing and stop the battle from happening. I love it.